there's a reason we always do the review when we learn the structure of the Bible for a good reason. And the way to understand God's Word is to study it. And you don't study God's Word by just opening it up to a, a page inside. You know, people open up to a page in the Bible and say, this must be what God has for me to read because it's what I open up to. Okay, that's, that's foolishness. Uh, this, this document is very important. This is the foundation of our faith. It's in, in, uh, written in black and white. And so we, we study it. And man, we have to know the books of the Bible. Amen. There's a reason. Amen. Man, you know, uh, uh, man put it together. He assembled it together. God gave it to us. And it's assembled brilliantly. There, this is the most brilliant book ever written. And so we have to learn it. You can't know what you believe if you don't learn what you believe. So we thank God for the review. And then like every other week, and we just love to, to, to we want to master what God says, not what man says, but what God says. And we learn what God says through the, through the Bible teaching, the anointed, accurate, God-inspired Bible studied Bible accurate teaching through the man of God. Uh, we were talking too much and not saying anything, and so it's important uh, that we get in the Word of God. Now, if uh, in the book of, to give you uh, just an idea of what I'm talking about, in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 22, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Greeks, the, the Gentiles, that's us today. Everybody in the church, everybody's, every preacher is wise. Too much wisdom in the church, but it's not wisdom of God. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. And so when you begin to preach Christ, so you can't preach Christ without preaching about righteousness because he is our righteousness. And so you can't preach Christ and omit righteousness. Any preacher who doesn't preach against sin is not God called. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And so the power of God, the wisdom of God, uh, are the opposite of foolishness and of sin. And so that's what we focus on. Now go over to chapter number 2. And let's look at verses 1 and 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And so all we're interested in is the purpose that Christ came to this world. He came to die for all of our sins that we all may have access to him in righteousness. Is that all right? Amen. 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 So we have to uh, uh, understand uh, Peter writes in 2 Peter 3 and 9 he says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So it is God's desire that we all come to repentance. But we are not going to come to repentance if we're not going to be honest. And so uh, uh, we're so preoccupied with not hurting people's feelings until we stop preaching the truth. Amen. And, and so... Uh, the efforts today seem to be uh, to keep people in the house, not for the saving of their souls, amen, but the accumulation of their gold. And so we, we uh, uh, pacify folks through uh, inaccuracies, untruths, or quite frankly, flat out lies, all because we're trying to keep folks in our churches, and I do emphasize our churches, as opposed to souls in the body of Christ, in the church of God. Amen. And so tonight, uh, the 
subject for tonight, the lesson for tonight is the church under attack. The church under attack. We live in a day of church, eat church. Amen. Where the church is under attack. Now, most people in church would think you will make you think that the greatest threat to the church is from without. But that is not accurate. The greatest threat to the church is from within. And so it is those people who are in the church or who were once of the body of Christ that have changed the truth of God into a lie. And that would be the Romans chapter 1 uh, lying spirits that we're talking about. Amen. Who are uh, yes, perverting uh, the truth of God. And so, uh, but tonight we're going to turn to the book of Jude. We're going to turn to the book of Jude. We're going to begin reading tonight at verse number 3. Jude, verse number 3, and again, the church under attack. Man, church, eat church world. Now understand now, because Exposing sin is not church eat church. Church eat church is changing the truth of God or attempting to change the truth of God into a lie. So verse 3, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now, oftentimes folks get the common salvation confused. This is not common as in lowly. Common salvation as in what we all learned from the very beginning. The truth of God delivered directly to the apostles of God to be shared with the people of God. And so, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh -huh. And so the, the, the faith, the teachings that were delivered unto us, amen, we are to earnestly contend for that. Now, uh, what Jude is doing here is he's rendering judgment on false prophets, false teachers, uh, false pastors. Verse 4, for there are certain men crept in unawares. And folks didn't notice that they were coming, that they had entered, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And so here these people uh, coming in and they're taking the truth of God and they're turning it into a lie. Now understand these are men who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So these were these are people who once preached and taught what we preach and teach. Uh, for instance, so in a lot of preachers who I grew up with in church, we believed in holiness and we didn't wear just anything and didn't go just anywhere and didn't do just anything, didn't live any kind of old lifestyle. But we've since changed what we do. And what's, what's worse about it is that when you stand on the, the faith that was once delivered to the saints, these people become angry with you. Uh, I always talk about it, and, and, and folks can interpret it as they will, but I love, I love to rub the devil in his face, to rub, rub the mess in the devil's face, the word. And, so, you know, just here in little old Mobile, Alabama, you got preachers who don't mess with candy. Uh, brother told me uh, last week, again, they said, you're too hard. You preach too hard. You're too strict. And, uh, uh, Lord, I 
it's just too bad. He wasn't criticized. He was just telling me what people were saying. Amen. But I love that they say that about me because it's time for somebody to stand for holiness. And I'm not talking about Amen. church tradition. I'm not talking about because we were taught this and we believe it only because we were taught it. We believe what is accurately written or taught in this written word of God. And if the Bible says it, we accept it. And so many times people try to say well, this is what the Bible means. Well, based on what it can't be based on your 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 studying it because people come up with with opinions and t interpretations of this Bible that, that are so far off and and don't confuse uh, uh, folk, some folks think because they sound hard or and and I mean in the eyes of man sound strict or in the ears of man for that matter uh, sound strict that oh this must be right because it's it's just strict. No, no, the word is not strict. The word is holy. Amen. Man, we don't look to be strict. And I understand what people are saying. And that's not offensive, but, but nobody's trying to be strict. We're trying to be Bible consistent. We're trying to be as accurate as possible uh, with the word of God. And, all, and it requires study. It requires study. And we certainly don't run from anyone. That's the one thing I say. I don't run from anybody at all. I just don't deal with foolishness. Amen. And, I, and I'm leery of some folks because they have the wrong intentions in this word. Amen. The word of God, I don't care uh, uh, how, quote, unquote, hard you preach it. If the intention has to be for the saving of souls and for the encourage, encouraging and strengthening of the brethren. And so these men crept in unawares, uh, unbeknownst to folks, they, they, they came uh, through the back door who were before old or ordained to this congregation. They once believed it, they understood it, they, they, they were taught it. But they're ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Now, lasciviousness is, is lewd sexual behavior. Uh, it's 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 totally out of control and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and and just think about it, in today's church, a lot of preachers, a lot of our presentation in church today are so filled with sex, Amen. sexual innuendo and all of these things. You look at you look at the gospel videos and you got flesh yes. showing. Calling a gospel video, women's yes. bodies gyrating, and it's all seduction. Yes, yes. Uh, that's lasciviousness. Yes, There's a lot of lasciviousness uh, in the church today. Preachers get up, and everybody wants to. We call it keeping it real. I don't have to be a freak to keep it real. Tell the truth. Yeah, man, I ain't got to get up and talk freaky to keep it real. Tell the truth. I can keep it real to keep it holy all at the hey, same hey. time. Amen. And deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though he once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. So they didn't say that Moses destroyed them, said that God destroyed them. Amen. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. God handled them. They rebelled against God. They rejected God. And God dealt with them. Yes. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. Mm. Mm -hmm. Giving themselves over to fornication. And going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, this is the church under attack again. And so, in today's church, people teach in church that we ought to be uh, 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 allowing any and everything to go on in the church. Because after all, you can't judge them. When I come back to that, you can't judge anybody. Uh, uh, there is a an epidemic of homosexuality in the church. Amen. And when you preach and teach against it, people call you the devil. Well, they're going to call me the devil. Amen. Because we've got too much of that mess going on in the church. And so here, in verse number 7 of Jude, uh, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. Too much fornication in the church. Yeah. 
there's a whole lot of sex going on in the church. Preachers sleeping with the women in the church. Sodom and Gomorrah is, is happening now. Forget about in America. Forget about in the world. We're talking about in the church. Folks who call themselves members of the body of Christ. And too much sin is happening in our church. Now, one of our problems is that we engage more in intellectual approach to God instead of just preaching and teaching holiness. Amen. See, if we come to Bible study and I'm sitting here trying to be the dean and, and, and come up with all of man's theologies and theories and all we're doing is taking man's writings and trying to teach, trying to make us smart, if you will, through the teachings of men, then what happens, you leave God's house and yeah. continue enjoying a lifestyle of sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. see, yeah. Yeah, uh, folks are calm and they'll come and, and with, with their hermeneutics, and they'll come with their with their homiletics and stand up there and make their, ooh, their delivery is just so eloquent. But there is no holy foundation. Uh, and so we, we again go back to the, the scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapters 1 and 2. The Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. Uh, and in chapter 2, uh, Paul says he does not come with the excellency of speech. Man, this walk is about holiness. Yes. And so the focus of our teaching is about holiness. Not about the deep things of man's knowledge, of his wisdom, of his understanding, but of the, of the simple things of this Bible. It is so simple that Isaiah writes that even a fool couldn't err therein. That's how simple holiness is. But you have to have a mind to live holy in order for you to live holy. Amen. And so, like Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. And going after strange flesh. Now, going after strange flesh, the men went after the men. And the, the, the specific problem in Sodom and Gomorrah uh, in the cities about them was that men were going after men. Men laying with men. When they went to Lot's house, they tried to get the two angels, the two men who had entered Lot's house. Lot offered them his two virgin daughters. And all of these men said, we don't want those virgin girls. We want those two men. In today's church, there's so much uh, homosexuality in today's church. So much. There's too many men sleeping with men. Too many women sleeping with women. Too many people in the church, engaging in sexual activity out of wedlock, and then coming back to church, saying they're people of God, standing behind the pulpit, standing up here, uh, leading the, the devotional, the praise and worship services, and without conscience, with no conscience at all, just too comfortable. We've got this thing now where people talk about, oh, this church come as you are and everybody's comfortable. Amen. If the devil comes into your cornerstone Amen. and comes and sits here comfortably, there's something wrong with the pastor. Amen. He must not be preaching and teaching the truth of God because the truth of God makes the devil very, very uncomfortable. Yes, yes. Going after strange flesh is set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Uh -huh. And so it's the result was that they died uh, in the fire. Yes. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. They're filthy dreamers. They defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yes. And so when you... Uh, uh, when you talk against sin, they talk against you. Now, we're still talking about the church under attack. Now, let me define for, for you the church. The church, uh, in, in, in a dignified definition of, 
would be the mystical body of Christ. But to be more specific and direct, the church is the body of baptized believers. The body of baptized believers. Believers, which means people who believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. And who have been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, you can be a believer, but not still be in, and still not be a member of the body of Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll teach that lesson another time. We get confused. And so there are people in the church who are believers, but they are not members of the body of Christ because they have not received since they believed. In order to be a member of the body of Christ, you must have received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the audible witness of speaking in tongues and with the evidence of a sanctified lifestyle. And so that, that then is the definition of the church. And so that church, God's church, is under attack. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. And so what they do is they make all of the sinning that, sinning that they do just fine. Now, let me, let me name some names because today we, get, we, 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 just, we, we cross, we get afraid to talk about the devil. Okay, now we see what happened in Atlanta with last year and every last few years with Eddie Long. Understand? Now... When a, when a man sleeps with men, he's on his way to the lake of fire. Amen. And he's not a man of God. Amen. God didn't call him. Amen. Or, or, I'm sorry, it doesn't mean God didn't call him, but he didn't obey God. Amen. Amen. So you, God can call on you, but if you disobey God, then you walked out of God's will, and now you are damned. But men sleeping with men. Now, 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 listen to what the Bible says. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Okay? Yes, yes. So, a man sleeping with a man is defiling the flesh. Yes. A woman sleeping with a woman is defiling the flesh. The yes. flesh. Humans sleeping with animals is defiling the flesh. The flesh. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Despise dominion. They hate anything or any authority that God puts in place and speak evil of dignity. So that not only do they hate God's authority and those who God sends, but they speak evil of them. Yes, and so they'll try to shut you down because they don't want you to tell the truth. Yeah. See? Yeah. So when you insist that God didn't create anybody gay or lesbian, They'll say something's wrong with you. Yeah. Or they'll say you're homophobic. Now, the phobic, the phobia part means there's a fear of. Mm -hmm. So that's where they got a, they have a problem with their word because I'm not afraid of anybody who's gay. Amen. Man, I'm, Amen. I'm, I'm, I have, there's no homophobia. Amen. I ain't scared of the devil. Amen. But the sad part is I love them. That's why I tell them the truth. You cannot make it to heaven practicing sin. Yes, yes. But when you preach and teach these things, then folks come against you. Yep. Likewise, the, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise the man, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, just not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, uh, the Lord rebuke thee. And so this is why, y'all, I don't fight folks. Because we're not fighting people, we're fighting spirits. And so... The thing to do is, not, I'm not having a debate or a conversation with someone uh, concerning sin. We're not going to debate what's sin and what isn't. The Bible already tells what is sin. Yes. Plain and simple. Yes. If you reject what the Bible says, that's not my problem. Amen. But I will not sit down with anyone and negotiate what is and what is not sin. We're just going to stick with the word of God. That's all. We're going, we're going to be Bible accurate. Yes, yes. This is sin. I wouldn't dare uh, uh, sit around with another man with, with, with the preacher talking about we're going we're going to debate uh, have a debate about homosexuality. What are we going to debate about? It's sin, plain and simple. Amen. If you disagree with that, that's not my problem. Take that up with God, not with me. 
But we, we, you know, we start bringing really accusations, we get mad. And that's why so many of us come to church mad, because we're trying to argue about something that is not none of our business. If, you, if I'm preaching the word of God, if I'm teaching this word, yes. and you disagree, you and I have no problem. Yes, yes. You have a problem with God. We're not friends, but we have no conflict. So I have no railing accusation. I just say one thing, the Lord rebuke thee. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes. But these be Amen. evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. Brute beasts. And those things, they corrupt themselves. And so, again, we go back to the, 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 the wisdom of men, the excellency of speech. And so, they, they, get, a little, they get a little man knowledge, and uh, they, can, they can give you terms and theories from their seminary from uh, some book they read and oh it sounds so impressive we talk about the apostolic doctrine and you got some of the brethren and, oh they've got all these uh, the Nicene uh, uh, conference and all of these things and, that, and that's fine but I have one question what does the Bible say Amen. all this other stuff gonna pass away Yes, yes. but this word is going to stand. And so, whatever you think you know, you better get in this Bible and learn what thus said the Lord. And so, these speak of though evil of those things that they know not, but what they know naturally, what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things, they corrupt themselves. And so, they, they take a bath in their own wisdom. Ooh, they're so deep and they get up and they got this presentation, man, they'll have everybody in the church. Wow. They come with all of man's wisdom. But I'm preaching Jesus and him crucified. Yeah. 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 Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Uh, these brethren have the wrong spirit. Yes, yes. Now, they were once ordained of this, but they walked away from it. Now, they came and learned what we do now. This is why, this is why they're so affected, because they came and they learned this way. Yeah. Turned around and changed this way. Yeah. Mm, Lord have mercy. And began to teach it with lasciviousness with deception, with deceit, uh, to mislead, uh, uh, to destroy, to manipulate them. And so all of these evil things, all of these evil intentions, uh, they, they, they exercise in the house of God. And we are so impressed with them. With them. Oh, man, I tell you, that's a powerful preacher. Did he preach the word of God? Or what did he talk about? But it sounds good. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth. Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. In other words, they look good, but they're filthy on the inside. Amen. Uh, they, they, they make good presentation. Yes. That's why folks go to church. Oh, we had a great time. That preacher preach what he preached about. That's when they don't know. Amen. They don't know because they were preached water. Let me tell y'all something. And this church, this, the church under attack was still there. Let me tell y'all something. When God preaches and teaches, when God speaks, yes. the devil trembles. Amen. Yes, yes. When our presentation in quote unquote church, and I, and I do mean man's church, is about sensuality, it's about emotion. When the preacher gets up, and we're more impressed with the fact that he walked the pews, who he ran around the church, or he, he had some rhymes and some quips, and all of these things, and, and it was the excellency of speech with which we were impressed. Uh, that's why we walk away from God's house still empty uh, concerning capital as spiritual things because we've not received from the Holy Ghost yes. 
And that's why so many people go to church day in and day out, week in and week out, and, and remain in a state of struggle uh, on this walk with God because they're not walking in Christ. See? And so when you're trying to walk this walk outside of Christ, then this walk, then it is a difficult walk. When you walk this walk in Christ, then your life is hid with Christ in God. Yes. So you walk comfortably. Uh, that's why people find holding it so hard. That's why they would say Andy hard and strict because their life is not hid in Christ yes. with God. Yes. But when it's hid in Christ, Remember, Jesus said, my yoke is easy, and my burdens, they are light. See, now it becomes a pleasure to walk this walk. Yes. Raging waves of the sea, forming out their own shame. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now, again, you see, they look good. All those raging waves of the sea, forming out their own shame. The, 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 the waves are raging. But they're doing no good. None at all. And guess what? If you get in those raging waves, it's going to kill you. You're going to drown. Wandering stars. No purpose. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? No purpose. Wandering stars. See, one thing, we have a star that we call the sun. Another we call the moon. And they illuminate this earth during the day and at night. Then we have all the constellations that we name in this in the sky, the Amen. North Star, the, the Orion Star, all of these different constellations. Yeah. And those stars, they illuminate our night. Huh? Yeah. Yes. But these are wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. So there is no point to them. No good point. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts in their, in their mouth, speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Now understand this, having men's person in admiration because of advantage. See, in the church today, we are, we are programmed uh, to admire Preachers, because of the size of the congregation, because of the fine clothes they wear, because of the fine cars they drive, and the number of cars they possess, and how big their house is, and and how and how beautiful the church is, and all of these things, and and so we're so impressed uh, with what they have, and so uh, verse sixteen again, Jude six, verse sixteen. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouths speak of great swelling words. And so, oh, I tell you, they're on all the networks. They're on Word, Word Network, and they're on TBN and BT yes. and all this stuff. Yes. And we're so impressed and because their mouths speak of great swelling words, and having immense person in admiration because of advantage. So, ooh, because they may be able to do something for me, I admire them. So you get around those people. You know, when you get around someone who has money, I'm not, I'm not you personally, but I'm saying when people get around people who have money, they perceive that someone with money can do something for me. Yes. And so they'll say stupid things and people start laughing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. We do that in the natural. We, we, we look up to uh, athletes. We look up to entertainers, to all these big name folks as role models. And you know, money doesn't make you smarter. If Amen. you give a fool a billion dollars, it's just a fool with the billion dollars. Amen. Yeah, you know, the billion dollars doesn't unmake you a fool. You're still a fool. Y'all understand? Amen. So we become impressed because all oh, we see in our minds, they can do something for us. So someone who you think uh, can do something for you, uh, you hold them in admiration. And they can do the dumbest things, say the dumbest things, 
and you laughed, <laughs> wasn't even funny. Right, that's true. If it was somebody who was broke, you weren't laughing. Yeah, you'd be telling them that was stupid. Amen. Because someone who you think has influence or who's something for you, somebody who you hold in admiration, all of a sudden their words are brilliant and, and hilarious. And so that's what the word is talking about. And so we hold, we uh, uh, we speak, well, these are murmurs, complaining, walking after their own lust, and their mouths speak of great swelling words, having men's persons and admiration because of advantage. And so we think, oh, it's something great uh, because uh, it's something that they can do for me. And so I'm going to flatter them by, by worshiping them. Mm, isn't that something? Now, so we have these spirits uh, in today's church. And so therefore the church is under attack. attack. Now, the attack against the church of God and, and understand is the church of God with the church of the saints okay it's mask and fighting against tradition and against preachers who preach against sin and so I have never seen so many people who are offended by a message that condemns sin as sin And so they'll get up and know you, you know, oh, we don't, you know, we're not traditional, we're not religious, and 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 all this stuff. And and I tell you, that stuff is unnecessary. You got to learn how to respect other preachers. I don't respect the devil. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if a preacher's daddy is Satan, I have no, no respect for him. Amen. See, because you don't believe in holiness, I believe in holiness. Amen. But you believe in hoariness Amen. and ungodliness. And so what respect am I going to give you when you are a filthy, hypocritical man who calls himself a man of God? And so uh, they love to call us traditional. Uh, we're too religious and all these kinds of things and they're constantly criticizing all because you're going to stick to the truth of God as written in his word and again not church traditions but the, what the Bible says yes. so thank God for my daddy he was my pastor Bishop James Gandy Sr. and my daddy Bishop James Gandy Sr. taught us the word of God mm-hmm yeah, the word of God. And so it wasn't he didn't pass out a bunch of church rules. He just taught the Bible. You know you live what the Bible says. Amen. That's all. If the Bible says come from among them and be separate, then what do we do? We come from among them and be Amen. separate. Amen. If the Bible says put difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean, then what do we do? Put we put difference. difference. Amen. This, is, this is a very simple thing to do. Yes, if yes. the Bible says love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, then we don't love the world nor the things that are in the world. Amen. Which means that we don't we don't hang out with, we don't we do, we don't do what Amen. the world does. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Amen. If any man of the world the love of the Father is not in him. So if you practice the ways and the traditions and the, 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 the uh, uh, habits of the world, then the love of God is not in you. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. But when you preach this today, you come under attack. Man, I, you know, it's strange how when uh, I preach, sinners come to me and they, they'll tell me, oh, Pastor, again, I sure enjoy that. You know, you just write me love holiness. But it's church people who get mad when I preach against sin. Sinners don't get mad, but the church people do it. Lord have mercy. Now, there are cold words and phrases that people use to criticize the truth of God. And so uh, they have labeled us traditionalists and legalists. And so what we preach and teach, they call it legalism. When we say thou shalt not, all of a sudden, that's the Old Testament. But I've never seen these people reject the Old Testament promises that God made to Israel. Now understand this, the distinction. In the preaching of righteousness, 
the righteousness is covers all people, Amen. Jew and Gentile. Amen. So the righteousness that God gave us in the in the book of in the in the Old Testament. Jesus didn't come to eradicate, he didn't come to do away with that. He came to fulfill it. Yes. He came to fulfill it. Yes. yes. And to make it perfect. Yes. And so uh, they talk, they call us legalists because we believe in holiness. But these are code words, code phrases that are intended to criticize us. And y'all need not be discouraged by these criticisms. And be happy when folks criticize you because you stand on Amen. holiness. That can be verified through the written word of God. Yes, yes. Be happy about it. Be proud. Yes, All right. Thank you yes. for being for, for them criticizing me. But these same people will turn around and say, We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. Blessed going out, blessed coming in. All this now. And those are the promises that God made not to us, but to Israel. So the promises that the church tries to claim with all of these natural material blessings are the promises that God made to Israel in the Old Testament. But they never reject that. But when it comes to the righteousness of God in the Old Testament, all of a sudden it's rejected because now it's legalistic. Isn't that something? Yes, but that's a church, eat church world. And these folks were once ordained to this and they left it. But I'm not budging from the holiness of God. Now, people are deceived because the devil speaks through men to convince men that it does not matter what you do or say. Doesn't matter how you live. God is a God of mercy. Now, here's what they're really saying. These are their cold words, y'all. And what they're really saying is, I won't criticize your sin. You don't criticize mine. You just come over here and support me and I'll cover you uh, when they attack you. Now, that's what they're saying. So they hook up with one another because they support each other's sinful lifestyles. Now, these are men with lifestyles that require secrecy because their deeds are evil and their intentions are ungodly and impure. Mm -hmm. And so they seek to destroy everything in God's house that is holy. Now, I just don't understand how the church yesterday preached against women wearing pants. And then today, when you preach it, they call you the devil. Now, I'm just telling you, now the church I grew up in in New Jersey, Chief Cornerstone Church of Christ, where the, the, the pastor was uh, Bishop James Gandy Sr., where he taught us women don't wear pants. If you tell most of the folks in that church today or from that ministry today about that, they'll cuss you. These one, two. There's something wrong with you. They get mad. Yeah, we were taught women don't, and according to the scripture, women don't wear makeup and jewelry. Yes. It's not the adorning of yourself with that stuff. Yes. But today, you teach it. And they, 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 they become your enemy. These are the things that are happening today in the church. Man, people who once believed the apostolic doctrine. And I'm not talking about, see, apostolic is not just baptism in Jesus' name and the oneness, uh, preaching the, one, the Godhead. I'm not talking about this. It goes far beyond that because if you're not holy, then you are not apostolic. Amen. But there was a holy standard that was taught, preached, testified of, and lived in the church. And when you preach and teach that today, you come under attack. Yes, yes. But when the preacher has a filthy lifestyle that he wants you to cover him, and he'll cover you. Don't talk about my cat. I won't talk about your dog. Leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. The problem with that is that God sees all of us. 
And so whether I preach against sin or not, God is still God. His standard is still holy. And so if I jump out of God and start not preaching against sin, then God's going to hold me accountable, and I ain't going to help nobody. Not even for myself. Amen. Yes, but people with ungodly and impure intentions uh, come against the standard of holiness that is still taught in churches. Yeah, so now these spirits are dangerous because they scratch people's itching ears. And the people have itching ears. Everybody wants to be uh, 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 satisfied. And, and everybody, you know, they, they, they say, oh, they just, I want to feel good. Everybody come to church to get an encouraging word. And they want to lead the church feeling soothed, but your soul has not been affected at all. There is no change. None. Your flesh felt good. Your, your, little, your little spirit felt good for a few minutes, but you went right back to your sinful lifestyle. That's not God. No. They're dangerous because they scratch itching ears. They please your flesh, but they endanger your soul. And so, oh, it sounds so good. I'd say, mm. oh, he just know how to take that word. It just, oh, it just makes you just want to run, right? But did the word make you want to live, right? That's the question. Yeah, that's the question. The word of God ought to move all of us to holy living. Yes. When I hear the word, I ought to come under conviction and say, Lord, you know what? The word found me where I am. And Lord, the next time you come across here with that word right there, I'm not going to be in this place because I'm trying to get to heaven. Amen. I'm not trying to be a good church. I'm not trying to look good in front of people, trying to look pure in front of people. God, I need to be holy in your eyes. Yes, yes. But when you commit yourself to holiness, then you come under attack. So those evil spirits, those deceiving spirits, those conniving spirits, their words are laced with flattery and flavored with compromise. And their intention is to ingratiate the listener. Ooh, I, I need, by the time I sit down, I need you to be shouting. Preacher, get up. They, will, they won't sit down until the people start jumping. Somebody's got to dance before they sit down. Yeah. They want, I'm going to leave them in a tizzy. Or they got the proud side before they sit down. All this kind of stuff. They got to have an entourage behind them. This stuff is deceiving the church. Yes. People's lives are not changing. Tell the truth. No, they're not changing. Because they're playing with God. Amen. And most people in the church Amen. don't know it. Most don't know it. Don't know what good teaching is, because when you never when you never had good teaching, you don't know what good teaching is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, every preacher there, everybody's preaching a series. Every time I turn around, I preach goddamn my series, my sin. Are you serious? Y'all know I I try to prepare, you know, I prepare a message every time I come to church. And it seems like every time I get it, God changes what I thought I was gonna preach. Because I put my, my I didn't call me to preach. Say God that. called me to preach. Say. Yes. So I preach what God tells me to preach. Yes, yes. But I study his word enough to be prepared. Yes. Ain't that all right? That's all right. Always ready yep. to tell her the goodness of the Lord. Yes. And it begins with his with the righteousness that he has written here in this Bible. And so uh, they flatter. They give you just the flavor, just the tone, just the just the just the just, just the, the right side. Ooh, that's what I like. But when you come and you get the people angry because you preach the word of God, then they'll say something wrong with you. Then you have preachers, pastors who will come against you, who won't fool with you. Because when you left the people who were mad, right, they should be mad at you for lying to them. Yes, sir. You're mad at the wrong one. Amen. I'm telling you that if you sin, the Bible says the soul that sinned, it shall die. die. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Yes. But you want to tell the people, oh, don't worry about it. After all, we serve a merciful God, so you can live with your boyfriend. You can live with your girlfriend. And don't worry about it. After all, God understands. No, y'all going to the lake of fire. Right there. Amen. I know. This makes enemies because the church is under attack. The church. I defined the church already. Yeah. The body of baptized believers who have been filled with the gift of the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. Um, now, these peoples, these preachers, 
their objective is to create an atmosphere that separates their followers and themselves from those who hold true, who hold tight, who, hold, who are, remain committed to the apostolic doctrine. And so uh, uh, they're not going to fool with you. They don't want you to come around. See, if, and, and I understand it, you know, I understand because, because these preachers here in Mobile know that when Gandhi comes preaching holiness, your people sitting under you are going to realize, wait a minute, my past is a whore. And the Bible says a whore is not saved, so I'm sitting under a preacher who's not saved. If, if the pastor is running women, he is not saved. saved. Amen. If he is gay, he is not saved. saved. Amen. And then we get confused because he can't be gay. He's married. That, and a whole bunch of them get married trying to, trying to uh, uh, cover up the fact that they are gay. Amen. Amen. That's why we have so many miserable women in the church. Yes, yes. Because it's hard to find a man. I'm not talking about because man, I'm not talking about because he's got, he ain't got a job, he ain't got this, he ain't got that. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about a man. Who sleeps with exclusively with women. women. Who loves only women. Who has no fleshly feelings towards another man. Now that's a man. It's hard to find them. So when y'all see a bunch of men always having to be together. Okay. Yeah, something wrong with them. Amen. I'm a man. A man wants to be with women, yep. not with a bunch of dudes all the time. I don't care how tight I am with any, with any man, bro. It comes to a point where, all right, man, I'll holler at you later. Tell the truth. I'm not trying to be around no men all the time. Be around a dude all the time. Lord have mercy. Yes. So, 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 so they don't, they want to keep their people separated from the man that God is going to bring the truth of God. And, and, and now go back to Jude, uh, verse 4 again. For, the, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So they get their start in church. They learn what they know right here in church. church. And so their modus operandi, their MO, their mode of operation, is to magnify themselves, convincing people that they are some great power from God. That's why you see all these big personalities in the church are so flamboyant. The preacher gets up and get up and they preach, and after he preach, he faints. That's called a sissy. Amen. Yeah. No man get up acting like that. I'm a man. I'm going to get up with all this falling out and carrying on. It's <sighs> no man. Y'all listening to me. Amen. The church is under attack, so I'm fighting back. Amen. Amen. It's time to launch an offense against the devil and his ways yes. and his yes. imps. No man no. holds a microphone like this. That's not a man. Y'all hear me? Yeah, amen. No. I'm a man. When I look like I'm in church, I'm, I'm oh, after I finish preaching, now y'all got to pee me because I done faint. I'm, I'm falling out. I ought to kick him. Kick him in his honey. Get up, silly rascal. If I'm walking around, if, if I have the mannerisms of a woman, then I'm not a man. If you are effeminate, you are a sinner. Y'all yes. listen to me. Amen. Church under attack. But I'm fighting back. Ain't it all right? Yeah, so this is the church, the church world. Now this, world this is the world we live in. And so... You know, but again, when you preach against sin, they say you're fighting the church. No, I'm fighting the devil. Sure. The devil who's taking up residence too comfortably in God's church. Amen. It's time for somebody to expose the sin that's being practiced yes, yes. in God's house and in the name of Jesus. Yes. 
Somebody's got to cry loud and, and spare. Now, so we're, we're, but we become impressed because of what we see them do. Uh, verse 70, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These are the last times there are mockers in the church who are walking after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves. Uh -huh. They don't want to be around a true man of God. I've seen preachers out just speak to them. Man, I, they don't want no conversation. They keep going, hey, 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 take off. I know what spirit you're of. You can't fool me. You're not going to fool with me because I'm not playing with sin. These be they who separate themselves, sensual. And there's, a, there's far too much sensuality in the church. Way too much sensuality in the church. The church is far too worldly. We've got things going on in the church that are far too sensual. Come to church now, you've got all these praise dancers in the church. And they're up in front of the church parading in their little leotards and throwing their legs up and putting their hineys up and all this stuff and gyrating, talking about they're doing it for Jesus. No, it's not Jesus. That's called sensuality. All this mess going on in the church. And they're talking about hallelujah. No, it's called sensuality. Having not the Spirit, capital S. Having not the Spirit, and the Spirit is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will not allow a woman to get up before the congregation more than once, Amen. if at all. Talking about holy, holy, no, it's hoary, 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 that's what you are. No, not the Holy Ghost. Not the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is shamefaced. Yes. Holy Ghost is modest. No real man would allow his wife to get up there and do that. No, his daughters. Huh? Amen. What I like having my little daughters up there shaking their hands, coming here talking about they're going to do some kind of pray. You better sit down. Tell the truth. And I mean, sit down now. Amen. This is sensuality, y'all. Practiced in God's house and in his name. But they have not the spirit. They have not the Holy Ghost. Yes. But look at look at how how considerate God is and how considerate Jude is, and, and uh, as a result of of God being inside of him. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, holy faith. See, we love to talk about faith, but we don't talk about holy faith. Uh, building up yourselves on your most holy. Faith. Now, in this instance, uh, holy faith talking about your holy teachings, the holy standard, which is your doctrine of holiness. You know, today folks are talking about we don't preach doctrine, all this kind of stuff. Yep. <laughs> well, what happened to Paul writing to Timothy to rebuke, exhort, uh, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine? Oh, uh, Lord, I love this word. Isn't that something? Yeah, so, yeah. but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, the reason these people are not built up on holy faith is because they are void of the Holy Ghost. So, if you're void of the Holy Ghost, then you cannot pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes. The encouragement, keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ yes. unto eternal life. So don't you worry about what they're doing. Just be aware of what they're doing. Yes, yes. But you keep yourself in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now, everybody's looking for the mercy of, the mercy of Jesus Christ. The problem is, they're looking for the mercy of Jesus Christ to justify, to pacify, and to conceal the sins that they are committing in this life. So, I feel better about 
my sin because my preacher tells me, after all, we serve a God of mercy. But when you know what the Bible says, you become uncomfortable with practicing sin. When you, I'm sorry, when you know what the Bible says and you accept what the Bible says, you've got to know what he means, what God means, and accept what, he, what he's saying, then sin becomes an uncomfortable lifestyle for you. And so then looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So we look for his mercy unto eternal life. The only way to gain eternal life is through being born again of water and of the spirit and then living a lifestyle that is consistent with the holiness of God that is written in this Bible and the evidence of that is the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, and tempers. And so if your lifestyle has not changed or if it changed and you went back to what you used to do, well the same Bible says, if I do again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. <laughs> make myself a transgressor. Yes. And, and, and so it is my responsibility as the church is under attack to attack back. Yes. Yeah, yeah. See, somebody's got to know that, 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 that there, there are people still in this world who love the righteousness of God, rightly divided, that can be proven through his rightly divided written word, not opinions. Not again, not church tradition, not what I was taught as a and use that because just because what I was taught, but because what I was taught is consistent with the word of God. And so my job is to help souls uh, to make it in heaven. And so the instruction, and of some have compassion, making a difference. So there are some folks who need to be dealt with in the most compassionate manner. Uh, and that's what should happen. And the man of God knows when he's sensitive to the Spirit of God, knows uh, when that's necessary. But verse 23, and others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So today's culture, people will convince you, well, you know, you shouldn't be, they, they tell you're beating the people up. Uh, they tell you, oh, you're beating the people. Uh, you're just being, you're being, you're, you're, you're abusing them. Oh, I see. When you tell the people that the wages of sin is death, then you're beating them. When you remind them that their sinful lifestyles are going to lead them to the lake of fire, then you're beating them. Well, let, let's just say, let's just grant them that that is that that is be, that you're beating up on the people. Let's just let's grant them that. Okay. Well, let's, let's read the word again. And of some have compassion, making a difference. Isn't that nice? Yes. And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Isn't that something? Yes. So here, both approaches are legitimate. But why are you going to attack the preacher who preaches against sin? Not automatically when you preach against sin, they say you're being mean and mad. And you're angry because you preach against sin. You know, and that's that's that spirit's opinion. But they come to they come to, to uh, criticize everything that God says for them. Anyway, and, 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 and their MO is to make the preacher who preaches against sin to look like he's angry, like he's mad, like he's ridiculous. So automatically then the people will ignore what he says because because my preacher said he's just mad. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the way it is, y'all. That's yeah, the way it is. Yeah, but true. you have to know these things. Yes. Because if you don't, you'll be deceived by them. Yes. Now we're impressed with them. Oh, he's got to be a man of God. We're so impressed with the things that we see with our natural eyes. And it's got to be a man of God because I, he laid hands on me and I was healed. Well, he, he prophesied and it came to pass. Oh, it was so, that's impressive. That's impressive. But let's just see what the Bible says about those guys. So let's turn over to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Got your Bibles? Amen. All right, let's, let's, let's go to the Word. Matthew 7, verse 21. The Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is 
in heaven. Hmm. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Now we, we, we thank the Lord, Lord, tell you, hallelujah. They cry, he prophesied. They, 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 and he, he's, we know he's a true false prophet. Did I tell you that it was going to happen? Yeah, he's a false prophet. Yes, yes. Yes. And what did I tell you? Did, did I know you before you got it? Have I ever talked to you before? Have I ever seen you before? No. I don't know. I, I, well, okay, see, now he's drawing attention to whom? Himself. To himself. Yeah. Okay. So this way you know it's a false, it's a false spirit. Uh, because Jesus made himself of no reputation. And if he made himself of no reputation, then why are we in the church doing these things and making ourselves of some reputation? So many men will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name so? And in thy name have cast out devils? Now this, every time I read this, I read this all my life, every time I read this, it just messes me up. And in thy name have cast out devils. They cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Oh, I tell you, cast out devils. Mm -hmm. But I've got a Bible for what I'm saying. And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. All of these miracles they do, all these things they do. Oh, they feed the hungry, they do this, they that. Great. All these wonderful works they perform. Great. Miracles, great. Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. Oh, we're so impressed. I tell you, I, ooh, he's got to be a man of God because he said it and it came to pass. He, ooh, he called, he, he knew my name, child. He called my name out. Wow, really? And you think that that's God? But what about the damsel with the, with the spirit of divination? In Acts chapter 16. What about Simon the sorcerer in Acts well, chapter 8 or so? But Simon the sorcerer. What about the woman at Endor? We call it a witch. But the Bible says the woman at Endor who brought up the spirit of, of the dead prophet Samuel for King Saul. Wasn't that impressive? She brought the dead man's spirit up. Wasn't that impressive? None of, none of that was God. Yes, yes. So, you know, oh, oh, don't be so impressed, y'all. Now, understand the. Paul writes in 2 Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, it says, For the time will come. For the time will come. And that time is here. When they will not endure sound doctrine. In fact, today they don't want doctrine at all. They call it, and people don't understand what doctrine is. Not even these so-called uh, doctors in the church and professors and all these wise guys. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now they choose their own teachers. People don't go to church looking for the truth. People today go looking for a church where the preachers saying what they want to hear. Forget about what thus saith the Lord. People are looking to hear from the preacher what they want to hear. Oh, he said what I want to hear, child. I'm going to go sit under there because after all, he said exactly what I like. That's your problem. Amen. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. There are a lot of fables going on in today's church through the mouths of preachers who feign in themselves to be men of God. And so uh, today any preacher who criticizes preaching against sin uh, he's considered to be the devil. I submit since the church is under attack and so I'm attacking back. Any preacher who does who who, who 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 criticizes preachers who preach against sin, that preacher is a son of Belial, who boldly walks under the spirit of Antichrist. Amen. 
Amen. Now, the Bible talks about the son of Belial, and the definition of Belial is useless. That preacher is useless. The definition, another definition is without worth. And I'm talking about to God. That preacher is without worth. Uh, and in our today's vernacular, good for nothing. <laughs> Son of Belial. He's good for nothing. So all the folks who sit at home uh, or watching these lying preachers on TV and listen to the radio, to lying spirits on the radio, uh, who are at, at work, in their car, wherever, wherever you, you know, you, how you, where you get your feelings. Because um, they're waiting on a word from the man of God. They're waiting on a prophecy from the prophet and, and all lusting after all of these abominable methods of deception. These people are in danger of hell fire. Hmm? Now, you know, the devil says, see, well, it's not necessary to tell anybody they're going to hell. They already know they're going to hell. That's not true. Hardly anyone knows they're going to hell. Because if people knew they were going to hell, they wouldn't be living like the devil. Mm -hmm. People sit in the church, and, and the worst thing in the world is to sit in church and go to hell from church. That's terrible. You're going to sit in church, you know, you live in the cramp as a, as a hypocrite, then you're going you're gonna to burn, you're going to burn for eternity. So the devil will tell you, it's not necessary to tell folks they're going away, they're on their way to hell. Uh, and you know that's why, you know why that's so. He's seeking to take everyone he can to hell with him. Mm -hmm. And that's too bad. But the church is under attack. And the devil takes great pride in deceiving the people of God who actually know the truth. And change the truth into a lie. And will become enraged if you stand on the truth and will reject you, and will avoid you, and will criticize you, will tear you down, because you preach and teach against sinful lifestyles. Well, Pastor Gandy's testimony tonight is I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. Yes. On my way to heaven. And I'm enjoying my trip. Amen. <laughs> and I'm not stopping there. I'm trying to take everyone with me that I can. You know, folks say, I don't care nobody go. No, I don't want to go by myself. I know, no, no. God gave us, he prepared this place called heaven for us. And as people of God, we ought to be striving to win souls to the kingdom. And we ought to be striving to encourage the brethren who are walking in holiness to continue walking in holiness. This wonderful trip to glory. We have to be excited about it, y'all. Yes. We gotta start attacking sin. Yes. Yeah, right where it is, especially when it's in the house of God. We have yes. to attack it. Sin. This is sin. This is not God's work, not God's spirit, not his will nor his way. Huh? Yes, yes. Well, remember, remember now we're all frail. We're all frail. Well, Paul writes in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, he says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Listen to what he writes. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. That's our problem. It's our nature. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Yeah. Can't do the, can't do good for doing evil. Yeah. Now if I do, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. That's why folks can't stop sinning, because sin dwells in them. Paul writes in verse 20, I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. When I would do good, evil is present with me. Too much evil present with us. For us to reject the preaching against sin. All the sin that's in me, in my flesh, I need all of the beating of that sin I can get. 
Because you can't get too much truth. The problem is we don't get enough truth, and that's why the church is under attack from within, because we rejected the truth of God. Let me read one more verse here, y'all. In Matthew chapter 23, verse number 11. The Bible reads, For he that is greatest among you shall be, shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Now, the reason I'm reading this is because we've got a spirit in the church uh, that is, in some ways, the epitome of the attack, or the nature of the, of the, of the attack against the church. Uh, because we've, we've, we've changed the men of God, the self-proclaimed men of God, are not servants we have become kings. Man, we're, 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 we have too many stars in the church. Yes. And it's destroying the holiness of God. And so when the preacher returns back to be the servant, then we're going to see greater strength in the house of God. Now, no. God is still doing great things. And I don't, I don't mean just, just miracles. I'm talking about holiness. The righteousness of God motivates God. Huh? Yes, yes. The joy of the Lord is ours. Yes, so when we live holy and righteously, we bring God joy. Yes. And God, in reward for our bringing him joy through our righteous living, he gives us strength. Yes. So now we have strength to withstand the wiles of the adversary. So now, because we brought God joy through righteous living, he, in turn, gives us the strength to resist the attacks, to withstand, to withstand the attacks of the devil. But we have to get the preachers to return to being servants so that as the church is under attack, we're not standing above the people, but we're standing there with the people, beneath the people, to hold the people up in the righteousness of God that is verified right here in what we call the Holy Bible. Yes. Amen. So again, the church is under attack, but I'm attacking back. Amen. Amen. Church eating the church. Yes. We're going to fight them. Yes. All right? That's all right. Thank the Lord. All right. Thank God. Let's give God praise in this house. Amen.